Many of my viewers know that I focus my precious metals attention mainly on gold. I do this for various reasons, which I've covered in my videos, but sometimes I neglect to cover the options available for my broader audience. Oftentimes, people see the price of gold quoted, and they think, wow, I'd like to own gold, but that's completely out of my reach. I had a request come in from one of my viewers asking me to discuss options available for buyers of limited means. I think it's a good request, so I'm going to talk about a few ideas here. Please bear in mind that this is by no means an exhaustive treatment. I'd invite viewers to contribute their own thoughts and ideas in the comments section. After all, we're a community here, and the idea is to learn from each other. So if you are interested in buying small amounts of gold, and none of my ideas appeal to you, please be sure to check the comments section. I'm going to do most of my pricing research on Atmex. The only reason I do this is because this is the online broker that I generally deal with. Their prices are fair, and generally they're in line with other online brokers. So what I show here should be representative. You could shop around and find better deals. Just make sure that you go with a highly reputable uh, and highly rated broker if you're going to buy in any amounts that would hurt you if you were to lose the money. Here as a benchmark is the one ounce gold equal coin. This is my go-to coin. It's one of the most liquid coins in the world, meaning that the bid and offer spread tend to be tighter than for any other coin. It's very resistant to damage, it's highly recognizable, and it's private because brokers do not have to report sales via 1099 forms. Right now, Atmex is selling 1 ounce equals for $1,918 per coin for orders of 9 or less. This is a 10% premium over spot, and this is high historically. For most of the period of time prior to about two months ago, you could have ordered one and have paid only a 4% premium. But as far as precious metals go right now, a 10% premium is still pretty low. Still, shelling out more than $1,900 is pretty tough for most people. I usually advise a person to save cash until he or she can buy uh, the coin, uh, but if a person wants to buy smaller amounts at a time, it's certainly possible to do so. I'm going to forego showing prices for smaller denomination gold eagles right now, mainly because they're very difficult to come by. I couldn't find good pricing, but I did find some fractional rounds and bars. Let's see what kind of minimums and premiums a person would pay for these uh, products. Fractional gold can be economically obtained in the form of bars and rounds. Government coins are certainly an option, but they tend to be more uh, expensive most of the time. Here I show one-tenth ounce uh, generic gold rounds. At $193.80 for a one-tenth ounce round, this works out to be $1,938 per ounce of gold. So you'll notice that the percent premium is the same as for the one ounce gold eagle, which isn't bad. The drawback, though, is that you are left with a bullion product that's not as recognizable, may have a buyback price that's a few percent less than spot, and is reportable by the broker when sold in large amounts. The advantage, though, is that for the person of limited means, a person can pay $193 and get some gold. Of course, there are smaller gold products that can be bought. One of the smallest denominations of gold available is the one gram bar. At $78.05, this works out to be $2,427 per ounce, which is a whopping 39% premium. And if you don't buy two of them, then you'll pay an extra $10 for shipping. I don't recommend this as an option because the premium is just too high. If you're going to buy these, buy them as gifts, not as savings. For savings, go with one tenth ounce or larger sizes. The premiums are much, much more reasonable. Of course, a person who does not have much money to spend on metals each month has options other than gold. Silver has a long history of maintaining its purchasing power over long periods of time. It's much easier to buy meaningful quantities of it without spending huge sums of money. The main downside of it is that it's wicked volatile. When bought at the right time, it can serve as a great savings vehicle for a person of limited means. When bought at the wrong time, it can be pretty punishing. At the current gold to silver ratio of 113, I think this is a time when I can recommend silver as a good option for wealth storage. For silver, I generally do not recommend sovereign coins. They tend to have very high premiums to spot, and dealers tend to buy them back at close to spot pricing. For this reason, the bid-to-ask spread on them can be quite punishing. 
For silver, I like generic bars and rounds and pre-1965 U.S. silver coins. Here is a generic bar Atmex offers. The Atmex bars tend to be cheaper than more famous assay companies such as Johnson Matthey and Engelhard, which is why I'm showing this option here. If you have $100 or more to spend, you can obtain each bar for $21.30 and avoid shipping costs. Without shipping costs, this is a 39% premium to spot. This is similar to the 1 gram gold bar that I showed on the previous slide. So if I'm not going to recommend buying a 1 gram gold bar, I'm also not going to recommend buying 1 ounce generic silver bars either. The premium is just too high. You can do a little better by buying 20 or more. You'll knock a couple percent off of the premium, but it will require that you make a $420 minimum purchase. So this brings me to pre-1965 uh, U.S. coins. I personally like Washington Quarters. The reason is that if you are buying for numismatic value, you are going to be paying far, far over spot. If you're buying for the bullion, you might as well get the least rare coin that you can. The Washington Quarter fits the bill. An additional advantage is that the coins tend to have less wear than earlier minted coins. One dollar face is 0.715 troy ounces, so $155.87 for, uh, for a $10 face works out to be $21.80 per ounce. This is a 42% premium for a minimum order of $156. Frankly, I think you're better off with the generic one ounce silver bars if you want to buy silver bullion. But one thing that we can see for sure is that premiums on silver are larger than they are on gold, even if the gold is fractional. You just need to shop around. I'm not going to comment right now on which is the better deal, gold or silver. I think a person should have both. The gold to silver ratio is pretty high right now, but one also has to consider the effect of the higher premium. If silver is bought for a premium that is 30% higher than one would have uh, for gold, then you have to adjust the gold to silver ratio accordingly. When the added silver premiums are taken into, into account, it makes the current 113 gold to silver ratio effectively 79, which is still pretty high. It's just not 113. There are, are other options available to someone who wants to own gold and silver. I'm mentioning them here simply as options, and I will tell you right now that I don't hold any of them. I'll get to the reason why in a moment. On the top, we have what can be known as metal-denominated savings. Three of them come to the top of my head straight away. These are the one gold product offered by Atmex, which is a vaulting service with the Royal Canadian Mint. McIlvaney has a similar service called Vaulted. Then there is gold money. Each of these products are similar. They offer the ability to save in gold, silver, or platinum in denominations that can be as low as $1. Each has a cost associated with buying and selling bullion, and each has a periodic fee for storage and management. Each offers nifty features such as phone apps. They offer some interesting features, but I strongly urge you to thoroughly research them before buying. Then there are the exchange-traded funds. Now yesterday I warned against the purchase of commodity ETFs, and a few subscribers rightly suggested that precious metals are different animals. And that is true. Precious metals are easy and cheap to store, and so many precious metals ETFs state in their prospectuses that they store the metal rather than buying long futures contracts. This decreases the cost drag of owning precious metals through an ETF substantially. So as opposed to what I showed for the USO ETF, which is characteristic of most commodity ETFs, for precious metals ETFs, a person can expect to have significantly lower cost drag with these products shown here. Still, I personally stay away from ETF products. What I have learned is that precious metals tend to perform best when trust in contracts erodes. When you own shares of an ETF or a precious metals savings program, you do not directly own the gold. What you own is a contract for the ownership of gold. I personally would hate to come to a point in time when gold takes off in price because people lose faith in our contract-based system of financial engineering, only to find out that the contracts that I own are of questionable quality. But that's just me. These options are here for you. Just enter them with your eyes wide open. 
So this concludes my video. As I said earlier, this was not meant to be a comprehensive treatment, and we're all here to learn from each other. So please do contribute your comments below, and please read through what others have to offer. Many of my viewers know that I focus my...